Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound. I am with Richard of Pittsburgh Modular. And today we're gonna to talk about how to build a modular system, a Eurorack system from scratch. And this is mostly for people who just have no idea how do I even begin? And to paraphrase the saying, you know, with great power comes great complexity. And <laughs> it's very easy to get option shock. So we're gonna try and walk you through the steps. What you absolutely have to have is a minimum to get going in Eurorack. So you're going to need a case to start with. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need something to hold your modules and power your modules. And there's a lot of options available. You could start if you're just dipping your toes in, you're maybe modular and curious, we like to say. Something a smaller case is going to be what you want to start with. And that's a great way to get into it, too, because then it's not overwhelming. But if you do have a solid idea of what you want, or maybe you have a small case and you want to get a little bit bigger, you know, something a little bit larger, you know, a desk case or even a travel case is an option as well, depending on what you're going to be using this for. And if, you know, if, if you are, you're a player and you want something that you can really dig in and perform on, then maybe something with a keyboard is going to be better. You're right. Modular is all about choice, but it's all, you know, if you start small, none of those choices are overwhelming. And, it's a really great way to get into it. And you know, you talked about some of the, the, the choices and all of the options. Um, usually when someone buys a synthesizer, it comes with an oscillator. The oscillator automatically goes to the filter. The filter automatically goes to the amp. The envelopes are already connected to the filters and the amp and you just start. Yes. So when you have an empty case, what are you gonna start with? That's a great question because when you buy a synthesizer, it does. It comes with everything you need. You don't think about it. You don't think necessarily that a sound is made up of seven different components. You just say, okay, I press a key and that makes a sound. So, but in a modular, you do have to build it. And the first place you want to start is with the oscillator. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of oscillators available and they all sort of cater towards different genres and different sounds. We are big fans of our Captain Big O here, big beefy analog East Coast style oscillator, but it does have some of that West Coast flavor. But the, the important thing is, is that you have a lot of choice with the oscillator pick. So this one has a lot of different waveforms and that's your base. That's gonna be your foundation of the patches going forward. You need an oscillator. Okay, so now we've got a sound. Where does that sound go next, typically? Typically, you're gonna go, if you have one oscillator, you're gonna go straight to your filter. If you have a couple oscillators, you're gonna want a mixer as well. You're gonna wanna mix those sounds. A great way to think of this, and a point of reference for a lot of people in the synthesizer world, is if you can think of like a mini mug, for example. That is really the foundation of subtractive synthesis. So if you just look at that panel, that's a great way to imagine it. You start with your oscillators on the left. We have three here, but it could be one or two. And then you would go into a mixer. In this case, we have our mixer all the way to the right here, but it, you'd put it anywhere in a case. And then of course you get to go to your filter and that's where, I think that's the flavors that everyone love about modulars. You can start to experiment with different filters and different sounds. So what you do is you go with something and there's a lot of, again, with filters, there's a ton of choices out there. You find one, you know, listen to some demos, find one that sort of scratches your itch a little bit. And that would be the second step, definitely. And then from the filter, we're going to the amp filter goes into a VCA and the VCA is, is sort of classic with synthesis. You need something to turn the sound off. Uh, they call it a voltage controlled amplifier, which is a funny way to put it because it really does the opposite of that. An oscillator always oscillates. If you plug a patch into it, you're going to get that waveform all the time. So you need a way to turn it off. And a VCA is the voltage controlled amplifier. So that uses voltage control to turn that sound off a critical part of a patch. So it's really a voltage controlled D amplifier. It is. It really okay. is. And then, so now we got the oscillator, we got a filter, and, and in this example, like the Mr. Filter, it already has the VCA built in and an envelope built in, but assuming we didn't have that, the next step is now we got to control this stuff. Exactly. So we, what we've done is we've built our audio path, our os oscillator into our filter through the VCA. That's the audio signal path. Now we need to control it. Mm -hmm. And you do that we, you, with an envelope would be the way you would control the VCA. Typically, you would either want an ADSR envelope, which would be a traditional East Coast synthesis envelope, or you would go with a function generator, which is maybe um, 
it, a little less, in, it has an attack decay, so less control there, but a lot more ride range in what you can do with it. You can be an LFO with it. It can be a slew generator. So um, a lot of things may be less well. Mm -hmm. But when you're starting out, it's a great option because it gives you a lot of patching for little space. And then some other controllers, uh, so now we've got an envelope, but what would you want to kind of create the sequence or arpeggiation of pitch or tone or things like that? Yes, you're gonna need a way to create control the pitch of your oscillator, and that, you know, in this, in the Nifty Keys, we have a keyboard which outputs CV and gate. The CV is, in your rack standard anyway, is one volt per octave. Mm -hmm. So for every octave you play the keyboard, you're gonna go up one volt, and that comes out of here, you would patch that into here. If you don't have a built-in keyboard, something like a Nifty Case has a MIDI to CV built-in, so you would patch in your MIDI cable and you're gonna get out that CV, or they make standalone MIDI to CV converters as well, or if you perform like I do and I don't play the keyboard, I, I, I play the controllers, I just dive right in and I use the knob, but I want to change the pitch, I do it with my hand. Mm -hmm. So we've already talked about the envelope, the ADSR, Tech mm -hmm. Decay and Sustain Release, and that's really good for a one-shot thing. Mm -hmm. But if we want something to keep going back and forth, if we want to move pulse width, or we want to do vibrato or tremolo or any of that, we got to get an LFO. This is, this is really, modulation is really where your rack starts to come in its own. And the amount of modulation you can create and the way you can build on that is really up to you. And that's what makes modular interesting. So you do need an LFO. You need some sort of modulation source, whether it's a module like the Function Junction, which has multiple types of modulation built into it, or you know we have a dedicated LFO in the Nifty Keys, but it really could be any, and there's an infinite number of LFO modules available, and they all sort of cater towards different styles. Again, different needs, different genres. So you find one that fits into the style that you're looking to do, and you start there. And with modulation in your rack is really experimentation is the key. You take an output and plug it into every input. See what happens. Mm -hmm. And then for me, uh, all of this stuff sounds great, but I've got to have some sort of ambient effect at the end, whether it's in the rack, either a, a delay or a reverb or something, or an external pedal or something like that. But it's like, if I'm going to be doing arpeggiations, I'm going to want delays. If I'm going to be doing ambient stuff, I'm going to want some reverbs mm -hmm. or a combination of both. But at that point, we've got enough to make some pretty serious music, especially if we can multi-track. If you look at your rack, as a simple voice, oscillator, filter, VCA, envelope, some sort of modulation, LFO, it's not that complex. It really is a simple patch. Where it becomes complex is when you start patching things back and forth and creating something that's more complex within itself. But the basic building blocks are very easy to understand. And something you and I agree on very strongly, and that is don't buy 20 different things right away. Buy an oscillator, learn that oscillator inside out. Buy your filter, learn that filter inside out. Buy your envelope and LFO and learn each of those, not just what they do by themselves, but all the possibilities of plugging in. Then figure out what you want for your next piece. Because if you buy all of it at once, you're gonna have what I call option shock. <laughs> and you just, it's like, what do I do? I don't know. Like, what do I do? I don't know. What do I do? I don't know. What do I do? I don't know. There's just too many possibilities. So, um, and this is no matter what synth you get, I always say this, learn the individual things inside and out before you get more complex. You'll always be glad you did that. It's so easy to get, when you're planning your first modular synthesizer, it's so easy to get excited about every module you read about. In every module you watch a YouTube video about, I do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you finally get it home and you've bought all this stuff, you fill your case with all these, uh, it becomes overwhelming and mm -hmm. becomes, you're, you're afraid to dive in. Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So what you wanna do is start small. Start with what you consider a minimal voice. Learn it. And as you learn it, understanding synthesis is what you're really learning, not just those modules. You're, that's gonna guide, you're gonna say, okay, now I get it. You know what, I wish I really had a second envelope because I would like to do this. Then that will guide 
really quality purchases after that. Excellent. So hopefully that gives you a really good idea of how to get started with Eurorack modular synthesis. If you have any further questions about any of this stuff, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. This is Richard of Pittsburgh Modular. Thank you very much for watching.